The DJI maps nearly cost me my drone. As I mentioned in my last Cornwall video, the DJI app nearly cost me my drone. I was happily flying out over the sea. I was getting some footage of the Minac theater when the drone just stopped responding to the stick commands. Uh, but it just wasn't going anywhere. It was literally moving at 0.1 meter a second. At that speed, it would take a month to get back to me. I can say that panic had set in. I'll explain exactly how to avoid this situation yourself and how I managed to save the drone. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm always banging on about how bad the DJI maps are within their app. They're just inaccurate. They don't follow the UK legislation and they're pretty much a work of fiction. As part of my planning, I always check the Altitude Angel Drone Assist app and check for the UK airspace restrictions. I've pretty much stopped looking at the DJI maps altogether. As you'll see in one of my last videos, the Gosport Spinnaker Tower video, I was flying near, I think it was seven restricted zones. Now I ignored the request that DJI app had given me. The fact that it let me fly there reinforced my belief that this does nothing. And uh, just to ignore these prompts altogether, this was a bad decision. On a side note, don't use the DJI app to apply for permission to fly in a particular area. It isn't a request, all you're telling DJI is you have permission to fly in the area. Anyway, back to the story. I was flying near the Land's End flight restricted zone, but not in it as I checked on Altitude Angel and I knew full well I was probably half a mile away from that zone. What I hadn't done is check the DJI maps. And if you look at this, this little screen recording now, you can see the difference between the two. It's quite some difference actually. Uh, this is what nearly cost me the drone. When I started the drone and it, it took off, it asked me if I wanted to apply for permission to unlock. Now, as I've done before, I ignored this. Probably shouldn't have done that. I've flown out to get the pictures I wanted of the Minac Theatre, also a little bit of video of it. I was about 250 meters away now, and uh, I thought I'd try an orbit of the Minac Theatre. So the, the Minac Theatre is on kind of a headland, uh, I'm above the sea, and I thought I'd fly around to try and get some interesting shots. The first I knew the same wrong, the drone just wasn't responding. I was moving the stick to the right and nothing was happening. It was moving at 0.1 meter a second. It seems I must have strayed into the DJI restricted geo zone. And it did actually warn me on the screen, but because I wasn't looking at the screen, I was looking at the drone, I didn't really see it. It wasn't until it wasn't responding that I realized there was something wrong. After what seemed like an age of just hovering there and I'm not knowing what to do, Pretty much the last resort was actually flying back towards land. The closest land was, was the headland uh, where the theatre is. So I thought, well, worst case, I'll try and land on rocks there and just hopefully retrieve it. But that worked. I moved it forward and it headed towards the theatre quite happily. Before I got there, I kind of turned it towards me and I followed the line of the rocks and the cliff and I managed to get it back. But it was such a scary experience. I mean, I think the total flight was about 10 minutes. It felt like an hour and something I don't want to repeat really. Yeah, I was, I was happy to get it back. But there is actually another way you can lose your drone though, through uh, these poor maps. I'll come to that next. Now, I didn't realize this at the time and it's not something that I've ever heard mentioned. It turns out if you're in a locked DJI Geo Zone, the return to home won't necessarily work. The only way it'll let you out of that zone is if you take the shortest route out of it. And for me, that was heading back towards the cliffs and towards a theater. As you can imagine, I've updated the way I plan uh, my flights now. So obviously I always check the Altitude Angel Drone Assist app anyway, but now after I check that, I also look at the DJI maps. Despite the fact they're wrong, I at least know if they're wrong and if I'm going to get any problems. Second thing I do is I always now ask for unlocks. Now it seems like a common sense thing to do really, but 
because I've never had a problem with them before, I, even though I have asked in the past, it didn't really make any difference. I now make sure that I ask for that unlock. I was lucky because I had plenty of battery charge in the drone, but imagine if I'd flown with a battery that was half empty. So I, I very rarely do that anyway. You know, just make sure you've got plenty of charge in those batteries, especially if you're flying above the sea. There's actually another way you can lose your drone through these poor maps, and I'll explain that now. Uh, not all flight restricted zones are actually shown under DJI maps. If you look at this area here, we've got Farnborough Airport. It doesn't actually show up on the DJI maps. You can see the difference between the UK airspace and what DJI thinks. You can see that DJI app would let you fly in this area without asking for authorization. And obviously that would cost you your drone potentially. It, it could also cost you a fine, cost you maybe even a prison sentence because it doesn't tell you that this is a flight restricted zone. It would be better almost to have no maps within the DJI app and people rely on something else like the Drone Assist app that is correct. I might do my next video about flying over water uh, and flying over the sea. So maybe if you've had experience with that, maybe you could put that in the comment section and I might even use it in the next video. Thanks for watching. It'd be great if you could hit the like button and if you've enjoyed the video, maybe even click the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate that. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye.